Welcome to this week's HACCP Mentor Review. This week we're going to look at Chemical Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDSs, how to verify cleanliness within your food business, and what type of evidence you should provide to auditors to close out any corrective action requests you received in your audit. As usual, we'll also do a wrap-up wrap up of this week's food recalls and food poisoning outbreaks. But to get started, Let's first have a look at how do you define what clean is. Verifying the level of cleanliness can be, a vastly, can be vastly different from person to person. As part of any cleaning prerequisite program, there needs to be an element of verification. That means checking that the cleaning has been actually undertaken and that it's been undertaken to an appropriate level. To decide on what acceptable level of cleaning or what is acceptable, you really need to take into consideration any potential hazards that may result in substandard cleaning. The best way that I was ever taught on how to define clean and to verify clean was through three considerations, those being through sight, smell and touch. If you can't see it, as in you can't see any build up, grime, dirt, dust, food matter, you can't smell it, as in you can't smell any filthy putrid or abnormal smells, especially from around drains and bins. And the final one is that you can't touch it. If you were to run your hand over a piece of food equipment or say on top of a bench or a bench top, you can't feel any grit or matter. So they're the three things that I generally use to verify the level of cleanliness in a place. Food poisonings this week. We've had a few outbreaks to report and update this week. The Excel Foods Inc. Canada E. coli outbreak continues with uh, now 15 confirmed cases of E. coli 0157 being reported by the Public Health Agency of Canada. Uh, what started as an international recall of smoked salmon by uh, FOPAM in the Netherlands has now morphed into over 500 cases of Salmonella Thompson associated with product being reported in both the Netherlands and USA and this is to do with smoked salmon. Uh, this product was supplied to Costco in the US and was recalled at the beginning of the month. We've got a new outbreak for the week and that comes from Clark County in Washington where there has been 25 confirmed cases of salmonella with another 55 probable cases linked to a Mexican restaurant called On the Border. We'll check in next week and see how these outbreaks or these three outbreaks are progressing plus any other new ones. Going into our food recalls, again we've had a fair few recalls this week. So there's been food recalls associated with salmonella and listeria, metal contamination and packaging defaults. We've got the following products that were recalled due to the potential for salmonella contamination. These included Nature's Recipe Oven Baked Biscuits with Real Chicken, uh, Clef de Champs brand Organic Ground Ginger out of Canada, Zahn Confections brand peanut butter chocolate products out of Canada as well. S&P Company uh, Sunan crushed roasted Thai red pepper. Flannery's Natural and Organic Supermarkets located in Queensland in Australia uh, recalled their own brand of Flannery's own almonds, insecticide free. And then finally for our potential for salmonella contamination, we've got the Nina International record its own brand of ground hot pepper. Now Sunland continues in the media with further recall expansion this week to include raw and roasted peanuts both in shell and shelled. So there's been several food businesses who have continued to recall their own products based on this expansion. And it just seems this week there's a lot of uh, food manufacturers producing ice cream products that have been greatly affected and issued their own recalls around um, Sunland being or Sunland peanuts um, being supplied to them. Some other recalls, uh, Hannaford supermarkets issued an alert to their customers due to undeclared allergen, allergen sorry, on the product labelling for red velvet cake truffle and triple chocolate cake truffle. Four Seasons Dairy Inc. Uh, recalled herring fillets, Ad Atlantic recipe in oil due to Listeria monocytogenes. Praga leg ham was recorded by Mike's Meats located in the Australian Capital Territory uh, due to Listeria monocytogenes. Tyson Foods in Pine Buff, Arkansas recalled honey 
barbecue flavoured boneless chicken wings because of misbranding and undeclared allergens. What had happened, the buffalo style boneless chicken wings were packaged into bags meant for the honey barbecued boneless chicken wings. So I, somebody packing the wrong product into the wrong packaging. Kellogg's in the US recalled varieties of Kellogg's Mini Weeks due to metal contamination. And our final one, Kraft Foods recalled its jalapeno variety of Kraft string cheese due to the possibility that a thin layer of plastic film from the package may remain adhered to the product. Uh, this packaging default could potentially cause a choking hazard in anyone who consumes the product. To check out full details on any of the recalls that I've mentioned, please go and visit www.foodproductrecalls.com click on any of those links and you can get more information. Let's have a look now at our action of the week. This week what I'd like you to do is go and check your chemical material safety data sheets and to see that they're current. As a general rule MSDSs should be within five years of their document date. This one really is a no-brainer if you want to reduce the amount of corrective action requests that you get in any third-party audit to any of the GFSI standards or by your local food safety requirements. Quite easy, just make sure they're in date. Uh, we've got a topic here regarding providing car evidence to your auditor. So this one's really got me on my high horse this week. It seems that I've had lots of evidence sent to me to close out cars raised in recent BRC SQF HACCP audits that I've performed in the, the last month. But none of the evidence, or not no, most of the evidence that people have provided is not relevant to addressing the actual non-conformance raised. So in light of this, what I'd like you to keep in mind that you need to go back to your requirements of the corrective action requests to make sure you comply. You need to go through and state what you're going to do to fix and rectify the issue now, send that evidence to the auditor, do a root cause analysis on why the issue occurred in the first place and put in place a suitable action so it doesn't happen again. So to give you a bit of an example, if the audit standard states you must complete say an annual micro testing on your finished product and you haven't done it, you will be required to send to the auditor the testing report to prove that you've done the testing and that the car can now be closed out. Telling me as an auditor that the product's not scheduled until X date means nothing to me if you haven't actually done the testing in the past 12 months, if that's what the standard says, that there's a 12 month period. If you're not capturing the the product testing within the correct time frame on your own schedules, you need to amend your testing schedule. Well, well that wraps up this week's Food Safety and Quality Compliance Review. If you think these reviews are helping you keep up to date in as little time as possible, let me know and leave me a comment below uh, this video or this post. Thanks again for watching. I'm Amanda Evans and I'll talk to you again next week.